Hello everyone, it's Polars, Lights, and Signals here, and as you can see, I've accumulated a lot of very cool street lights, but there's a video I would like to do today, and I want to review this traffic signal right here that I had uh, promised that I would review a while back now, so let me go ahead and clean up here and get my little stage made, and we can take a look at it. So today we're going to be looking at my Traffic Signals Inc. 8-inch single-faced traffic signal. Now, let me give you guys a quick history on this signal. Um, the history on this is pretty short, but it is still somewhat interesting. So, back in the 1920s, a, co a company was formed called Southern Switch and Signal Company, and they were apparently located in Shreveport, uh, Louisiana. And they produced a few different brands of their own. Um, these uh, manufacturers or brands that they created made traffic signals and they were low profile built um, low cost signals for small towns or basic intersections that weren't too complicated and didn't need uh, like you know specific or high quality signals. As time went on up until the 1960s, um, Southern Switch and Signal Company was rebranded to Traffic Signals Inc. And they continued to produce uh, signals, um, I guess, into the 1970s. So from that point on, um, I don't really have any information or know um, what went on after that uh, time period. Southern Switch and uh, TSI produced all different types of signals. Um, they produced uh, four-way signals. They produced uh, these 8-inch uh, signals here that I'm showing you right now. And I think they also did 12-inch uh, signals as well. TSI definitely did do 12-inch uh, uh, single-face signals. But um, other than that, um, I don't know um, really anything else about them other than their um, basic history and what types of signals they made. Now, there's a lot of other things that TSI uh, manufactured um, regarding their signals and uh, other um, components and accessories, but today we're just going to be focusing on this signal itself and basically my overall thoughts about this because I do have some mixed feelings about the signal, but I really do like this signal. So now that we've watched its sequence for this entire intro, let's go ahead and take a closer look at it now. All right, so I'm gonna pan the camera up here just so we can kind of look at it. Now I do have the signal standing up and when I go to uh, look at it a little bit closer for you guys, I'm probably gonna have to lay it down because this has a really um, uneven uh, balancing to it. But as you can see, there is quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of detail. But if we turn the signal around, I actually, this is my favorite thing about this signal right here is the very back side of the signal. If you look, there is a nice big traffic light um, embossment on it. It's, it's visually um, pleasing and very nice. And there's a lot of uh, detailing and layering on these. Um, these are modular signals. These modules are extremely detailed and really cool. And I, I, I say, I'm saying this first because this is one of my very um, favorite things about this signal. It's super, super cool. You can see it says Traffic Signals Inc. Of course, it was made in Shreveport, Louisiana. And again, this embossment, which feels very nice and crisp and clean, and it's it's beautiful. And there's just a lot of detailing here. Now, like I said, this is a low profile, um, low um, lower quality build signal. Now, it's not bad quality, um, at least for the most part, but. Like I said, these are low profile, low cost signals. So even though this is um, made to be um, high quality still, it's very low profile. So there's not a lot of really exciting um, things about it or like really any durable things um, on the signal. But this is a cast aluminum, like pretty much every other signal of its time. Um, the casting is for the most part pretty good. Um, I will say like, kind of on these edges here, and I will flip it back around the front. Um, I will say the castings may sometimes have some weird uh, edges, like, I don't know if this is just from denting or scratching, I mean, this thing was up in the air, but there are some spots where there's some minor rough edges, 
on it, but it's not too bad. And another thing to mention too, since this is a low profile build signal, this signal is extremely lightweight. And I wanna say this signal, it probably weighs about the same as my 12 inch uh, Durasig here, if not maybe a slight bit lighter. And that is a completely polycarbonate signal. And um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's plastic, it's lightweight. And this signal alone right here is pretty lightweight too. But it's not bad, it's not low quality, it's just very low profile. Um, everything else on it seems to be okay. Um, you can see the visors here. This one has uh, cutaway visors. And there's a very big collar design you can see around um, the lens here. And we'll take a look at that when we um, take a look inside the signal. But you can see the visors here. And again, it's a pretty low um, profile um, build. As you can see, instead of having either like tabs or um, nice thick um, atta attachments to the door, they just have some notches in the visor and it just screws into the side of the signal so you can see that very uh, low budget, low profile um, aesthetic there. But it's still really good. Um, of course the visors are nice. Again, I'm, I'm going to just say it's not low quality, it's low profile. There's a difference between something being built in a low profile build than being a low quality. And you can see um, these notches right here, and we'll take a look on the inside, but these, uh, um, this is where the screws um, come into the door to uh, hold the lenses in. Pretty nice. And you can see the hinges here, and I'll show you in just a second. The hinges, um, all this is is a, just a little piece of metal coming out, and there is a, it's like a squeeze, uh, a squeezed in piece of metal. I don't know what they call that yet. But it just sticks out and just kind of sits in this bottom section here. And it's the same way going all the way down. And these doors are extremely easy to take apart too. Um, yeah, so one thing to mention too is uh, the parts apparently on these signals. Because Southern Switch um, and Signal Company, of course, had other brands that they had made to make signals as well. And I think all their parts are interchangeable. Ooh, see, that's what I was talking about, the uneven balance that this signal for some reason has. Um, their parts are all actually interchangeable, so you could put um, older uh, Southern uh, switch parts on this newer uh, TSI signal here. But yeah, other than the low, qual um, the low profile build, the signal overall is not too bad. It's pretty good um, for the most part, but like I said, there are some minor things, other, like, uh, maybe some slightly rough edges but it's not too bad it's I, th I think this is in qu at least quality wise it's not like low quality but it's probably the lowest quality signal you could find but it's not like really cheap or anything again just low profile build you can see the lenses here these lenses are just um, basic cop uh, sawtooth lenses and we'll take a closer look at them uh, when we go inside the signal here in just a second, but they're pretty standard. Um, I'm not a huge fan of these lenses, but um, they're pretty cool and they're clean. So let's go ahead and get into the signal now. So to get into your signal here, you have this, um, and this is something I do find maybe a slight bit cheap. You got this uh, tab here that you twist. I will say this is actually kind of complex the way they got this made, but it's, it's kind of, you can see it's kind of corroded and rusty, but you got this uh, rusted tab here. And when you go to open it, all you got to do is twist it. And there's a thing, you can see it slots and couples itself into that little tab in that hole. Again, when I close it, it couples itself back in. But you just twist it to open the signal. And voila, you just, you're inside now. So... This signal is about to fall over. Like I said, it has a very odd weight. So I'm going to go ahead and lay it down and we can take a better look at it. Alright, so I got the signal laying down here. So I'm going to show you guys real quick and this will help us uh, transition over into looking at the lens. But to remove the door, like I said, it's very, very simple. You just open it. And like I said, you got these hinges right here and that thing sticks down. All you got to do 
and sometimes you gotta wobble a little, little bit, but it's a little hard because I'm laying down, but see right there, all you gotta do is just lift it up and out to take it off, and your door is off. I'll show you again to put it back on. All you gotta do is slot it back in there like that, and boom, your door is back on. So again, very easy, um, very low profile um, attachment that you got going on here. So I'll go ahead and take it off again, and let's go ahead and take this lens out of this door and look at it. So to get our lens out of the door, you got these tabs here, like I said on the front, these little details right here. That's where you, your screws are um, go to um, hold the lens in. All you gotta do is just unscrew these four screws, and mine are a little sticky, but I can get them out. All you gotta do is unscrew those four screws, and then every each tab will come out like so here's our next one go ahead and set those aside so we know where they're at definitely don't want to lose um, these tabs and uh, screws um, not that you can't get any of these replacement screws at the stores these are super easy to find but I will say that um, especially since these are the, ri the originals and that these are the original tabs don't lose them um, make sure you put them somewhere safe so here's the last one and now there we go the lens has popped off and we can take a good look at it so one thing I'm going to mention uh, real quick um, TSI um, and Southern Flow uh, traffic signals had I believe a different cop style lens now mine doesn't have it, but I do happen to have a lens as I recently acquired a Darley signal that was completely hacked and had all the wrong lenses. So I believe that traffic signal, um, I've seen some of these with uh, of these traffic signal ink uh, signals with these lenses. Um, I believe this was the lens that um, uh, Southern uh, Traffic Signal Company and uh, TSI used um, commonly in their signals. Um, I do like this lens. It is a cop lens. I can show you. Um, it's a little dirty still. But let me go ahead and put the camera up just a little bit and I can show you some of the readings on it. It's, it's, it's a different type of diffusing lens. And you can see right here it says cop glass ink. Swiss uh, Pennsylvania. So these ones were made so at least um, this one I have right here was made in Pennsylvania. Now, I've seen some of these TSI signals um, in, uh, uh, like, around Cleveland, Ohio. I will say, I, um, I didn't say this at the beginning of the video, but this signal came from a Facebook Marketplace listing. And I've seen a lot of these signals on Facebook located in northern Ohio. So I don't know if this um, Ohio enjoyed using these TSI signals, but a lot of the ones that I have been seeing for sale have this uh, cop lens in it, and I believe this was a lens that, um, a, at least a lens style or design, cool design lens that um, cop liked using very commonly in their signals. But if I'm wrong, um, just let me know, obviously, in the comments. I'm still kind of learning a little bit about the signal, but the history is pretty basic, so I do... Um, would like to acquire actually a green and red, um, if I can, um, lens and actually put it in my signal here and take these cop uh, sawtooth lenses out that I'm about to show you um, out. But yeah, just want to uh, show you guys that real quick. But let's go ahead and look at the cop uh, sawtooth lens that came um, with this. I'm going to go ahead and get the gasket off here. The signal was in pretty good shape. Usually these gaskets um, dry up and um, they crack and fail pretty quick, but now this is called a cop sawtooth lens because of its design as you can see it has like a sawtooth pattern on it Which is really cool. Um, I, the reason why I'm not a fan of these lenses um, Is just because they're very common um, a lot of older signals seem to have these cop sawtooth lenses I don't I think the reason why these are really common is because this um, passes a certain code or spec of the time for um, proper light distribution so people can see the signal correctly. So I think that's why this is pretty commonly found in a lot of signals. But 
other than me not being a big fan of it, they are really cool. This lens is extremely um, high quality and detail. Pretty cool. Um, the glass is clean and clear and mold. The color is true. Um, you can see it on the front here, it says top, so you know um, which way to um, put to position it. You can see it says cop glass ink in there, so some dirt on it. I already put this in the dishwasher, but some of that hazing is from the rubber. But you can see it says cop glass ink, and I think there's some more readings towards the bottom. Yeah, but it's upside down. Let me go ahead and flip it. You can see it says there's some serial numbers and code numbers. And then this says dia, dia traffic. Just some readings I, don't, I really don't know the meanings of, but yeah. Pretty basic, um, common lens, but it's not a bad lens. It's a high quality, um, very detailed lens. And even though I'm not a huge fan of it, I do really respect and appreciate this lens. And also another thing I forgot to mention too um, about this lens is this lens is also really high quality. Um, this is very clean and clear and mold as well. It's very shiny and smooth. Um, obviously it looks really nice because it's the amber, but I'm actually being honest. This is a very nice lens. I think this lens right here is just a little bit more high quality than this one. But yeah. Hopefully I can acquire a set of these and put them in my signal. But for now, let's um, go ahead and put this back in the signal and continue to go over the signal and enjoy these lenses while they're in. So yeah. So here are the insides right here. So to get into um, your internal section of the signal, all you gotta do is pull this um, reflector forward. This, um, I think it's a little cheap, but this reflector here kind of just sits. You can see it doesn't really click in. I'm kind of able to wobble it around. It doesn't really sit or um, click in, it just kind of sits. Um, in there, but of course like every other signal you just pull it forward to open it and voila you're You are inside the signal now um, This signal does not have a little terminal block or anything in it when I got it it had uh, one of these eBay uh, controller sequences uh, sequencers, so I was gonna get one of these for the signal, but this one already happened to have this one so I think definitely I paid $80 for this signal, so I think for $80 including a sequencer with it, which these cost about probably $20 or $30, I think is a really good deal. So super cool. Um, it's sad that there isn't really a terminal block in here, but assuming um, you'd want to put a terminal block in here, there are these um, screw hole sets here and some numbers for your terminal blocks. And I don't know what the numbers are for, but I'm guessing that could be related to your sequence and colors um, for your terminal block, but I don't know um, that for sure since I don't have a terminal block in here. But yeah, pretty uh, pretty cool. You can see the top here. So you're, you got your holes here. Now these signals, um, of course, they're not rotted. They have these uh, special rings to attach each head together. So pretty cool and you got a hole in the middle obviously to route your wires um when I got this signal uh, the wires coming out of this uh, socket here uh, were really short um, they had obviously been cut so the original wires are not in here but I did put in um, sim similar wires that are the same gauge same style of coating and thickness um, to put back in the signal um, to uh, hopefully match match this as original as possible. I'll go ahead and close this back up. We can look at this real quick. This is an aluminum reflector, just a pressed basic aluminum, and then the frame that it's on is just a basic casting. And the casting, I think this thing comes out pretty basically too. I think you just pull it up, kind of like you do with the door. Pull that out, get that end out, and yeah. Very easy, as you can see, to take out. Um, I will say, I, I don't like how easy some of these things are to take apart, as I feel like things, these parts could easily get lost, but everything's here, so I guess it's not a big, a really a big deal. But yeah, you can see our socket here. It's just a standard uh, backlight style socket, and it is held in by the spring, which this one's not on correctly, I gotta fix it. But the spring um, wraps around it and kind of holds it in place. So yeah, that's kind of 
kind of unusual, but that's how they have it. And you can see the um, the wiring that I got on the back here. Now you're probably wondering um, how I was able to replace these wires so well. Um, everything is soldered. You can see these, uh, the camera will focus and never ever seems to want to. But yeah, now you can see, you can see some little metal holes in there. Those are solder points to um, solder wires and so all I did was unsolder the old wires and they pulled right out and I resoldered new ones in to um, hopefully bring these wires out a little bit more long so that they can reach to the controller correctly. And just because when I open this door, um, I want to have access wire so that wire isn't being pulled like that. I want to have enough slack to properly open the signal. So that's another reason why I replaced these um, wires, but yeah. Yeah, you can see all this um, construction again is just really low profile, um, um, lower budget to build. But it's not bad, really. Um, if this was low quality, it would probably feel even lighter in weight. Um, you know, there would be rough finishings, probably some pieces falling apart. But um, everything is good quality, it's just low profile. Again, that's, you know, that was the 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 main advertising for this signal so yeah of course since i don't have a terminal block i just have a cord coming in this is um i don't know if this was the power cord that came with it but this is a like a power supply cord it just has the switch and then it has a plug on the end with the ground usually with these signals you'll see a hook and a weather head um, on top hanging and holding on to the signal and your wires will route into that. I plan on getting one in the future but as of right now I don't have the tools to get this giant bolt off so for now I just have it routed in like so but not a big deal. I think actually this because this has threads in it I think the signal had a uh, probably a long rod of um, extending it down more so yeah it the weather head would have been way up there anyway but anyway got my cord going in here. I just got my ground attached to one of their existing uh, 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 screw holes for the block. I used one to clip the wire down so that this wire isn't pulling on the controller. Of course you can see my control here on the wires power the control. And it is again just a basic controller from eBay. Um, I can go ahead and put the link in the description for you guys if you want to buy one for your signal. Um, I believe these controllers are cool. Um, they do have some settings. I'm not going to go into all the settings and stuff, but your button here just programs your sequence settings. Um, this yellow will have make it so it has a delay on yellow, and then there's a little knob right there, as you can see. That little speed knob, all you gotta do is stick a screwdriver in that white spot and then um, twist it to either make your sequence go really fast or really slow. So yeah, and of course it has, and I'll turn them on, it has a really nice set of LEDs already built onto the panel so when you're um, going to troubleshoot or um, wire the signal, you'll know which uh, light is being currently lit. So yeah, pretty cool, I'll shut that off. Um, yeah, it's pretty nice, so I'll put the link in the description down below for anyone who wants to uh, just have a basic sequence controller, as I know some people like me don't have a lot of space in their apartment to um, have big control boxes. So, yep, something like this is a great way to get your traffic lights running. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and close that back now. Um, real quick, I'll just show you the light bulb. It's just, uh, let me see, I don't even remember who it's made by. Oh, there we go. It is a, just a Duro Test brand um, lamp, and it's not focusing. It never wants to. You can kind of see right there, it says Duro Test. Just a standard 69-watt um, lamp that you'd see in every other kind of uh, older style traffic signal, but the only difference is the shape. It has this dome on top, which I really like. It actually... Um, helps with the eyeball effect of the traffic signals. Now, um, that's something that we will, um, I will definitely point out when we go to look at the signal, um, is the eyeball effect, and that is something I give to these older traffic lights because um, the look of the traffic signal is very different from the LED stuff. Um, you can see that one individual bulb and the reflection pattern almost gives it that eyeball effect. So. 
because you got the one lamp in the middle, but with that dome, it adds an extra, a, an extra like eyeballish effect. Oh, there we go. The signal tipped over again. But yeah, let's go ahead now and look at the rest of the signal. We'll just look at it real quick as it's pretty much all the same. Again, you twist that little tab to open it. Here is your reflector, just the same cast aluminum mold. And since this one's mounted correctly, I'll show you. But you can see the spring here. It's like a tension spring that's wrapped around. And I, you, to spin it, I think you have to undo the tension a little bit and then the socket will start to spin. But it's kind of hard to put back on, so um, I'm not going to do that, but yeah, pretty cool. Um, these are the original wires, as you can see. Um, they're a lot more uh, relaxed in tone. The wiring is in good shape in here. So I went ahead and twisted it up and put some matching color tape just to keep it all nice. And again, you can see the, um, the circular um, bolting system that they got to hold the modules together. Pretty cool. And again, this one's a lot cleaner, so you can see the spots where you could put terminal blocks. Um, I assume with the orientation of these screws that these traffic signal inks signals kind of have their own style of terminal blocks. So if you were to put in a like a stock standard one, it probably would not um, fit correctly. But yeah. Anyway, go ahead and close that back. And again, like I said, it doesn't really click. It just kind of kind of sits. So yeah, go ahead and actually let's look at the lens real quick. That is the yellow amber sawtooth lens, pretty nice. It is the same lens, just amber or yellow, whatever you want to call it. And we'll look at the green real quick. Pretty nice lens again, you can see that same construction and detail. The gasket here and the tabs, which are a lot cleaner than the ones on top for some reason. Usually the bottom ones are the worst. Again, you can just open and this one's a little bit more clicked in. Again, the same construction. Ooh, I'm going to have to put a new piece of tape on that. Same construction. You can see your neutral. And you actually, I didn't even plan it out with the yellow one, but your neutrals in here are striped with um, the appropriate color stripes, so you know which one's which. And yeah, pretty nice. Um, real quick, before I close this back up, you can see the gasket here for the insulating of the door. Pretty basic. Um, the gasket is in good shape. Again, it's just a low profile. I these little tabs in here kind of help that to kind of click in a little bit, but you can see these fall out. That's why these open so easy. Like I said, very low pro profile build. Not super amazing, but still nice. And I have another one of those Duro test lamps. Um, this signal had all three of these same lamps in it. I don't know. If these are brand new and these um, were put in by the original owner, but I'm glad that they're all here and matching um, and they're all the same wattage just so there isn't a mix match. So yeah, and of course, you can kind of see it on the inside, but when you don't have anything going out of the bottom, usually you'll see this end cap here. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the insides and overall entire signal. So yeah. Um, let me go ahead now and I'll stand it back up and position the camera and we can just watch it do a basic sequence. Now real quick, actually before we do that, I have this little spotlight here and I didn't have it on at the beginning of the video, but just so I can give you guys kind of an idea of what this lens would look like on the signal, here we go. Um, this uh, light, if you're wondering what that is, it's just one of those um, workspace floodlights I just got from Myers, and it is eight inches in diameter, so the lens sits perfectly in front of it. And this is, is something I use actually to just kind of overall look and inspect the lenses um, as I get them. So yeah, pretty cool. I'll go ahead and shut that off. Maybe that'll be something I do for a future video where um, I get some rare lenses and maybe just talk about them and I can show you guys the lenses in um, by using that thing. So yeah, let's go ahead and now get into this signal. All right, now I got now I got the signal um, standing up properly. We can take a look at it. So I'm sure you guys want to see the signal 
doing um, some other sequences such as uh, red flashing and yellow flashing. So I went ahead and got my instructions out of my uh, eight, uh, 12 inch stir sig since this controller is also the same. And I will go ahead and um, use these to switch over to our sequences so that we can watch it do all modes. I don't think I did that with the Dura sig last time. So if I didn't, um, I will now do it with this <coughs> signal. Ouch, my bad. And it'll be cool. So. Yeah, you can see right now it's just in a standard um, red, green, um, yellow sequence. That was a really bad way of saying that, but you know what I mean. So let's go ahead and kind of just watch it for a minute. And while we watch it, I want to talk about again that eyeball effect that I um, had just previously mentioned. So one thing about these older signals, and I'll kind of zoom in so we can kind of try to look at it. But these older signals, with the way the reflectors are designed, you can see um, that there's a little bit of extra light um, around it, but you can see that lamp in the middle. And when you look at this from all sorts of angles, you can always see that one little lamp as the brightest point of the lamp of the traffic light. And it gives off this um, they, it gives off what I like to call the eyeball effect that the incandescent traffic sig um, signals have. And I'll look at the green, we'll look at the green real quick. You can see kind of eyeball effect. The lamp in the middle is like the pupil and then all the rest of the light around it is kind of just the rest of the eye. That's why I call it the eyeball effect. I really like incandescent because of that look. You can see the lamp in the middle and then the rest of the light around it. And again with the red. I really like these signals because they have the eyeball effect but the LEDs just don't have that unique design and since these have that eyeball effect it really makes these signals feel more real it almost feels it gives them more depth and more appeal as where the LED stuff with their solid color boring um, non um, smooth flashing LEDs it makes them you know it just makes them look really static and kind of just too you know too modern and maybe too um, boring and unappealing really so I really like these incandescent signals for that charm that they have with that look eyeball effect look in the sequencing but let's go ahead and just watch it sequence we're at yellow now red I won't spend too much time on this you guys can easily replay the video now we're back to green and watch it go back up to red, and then I will go ahead and switch the functions. We're at yellow, and now red. All right, so one thing that's nice is when you buy this controller, it comes with a nice huge list of every function. So let me go ahead now, and you can see I'm in my lovely blue PJs. Let's go ahead and change the sequence to a flashing yellow. And if I can do this without the signal, all right, I went ahead and put my knee under the signal to kind of hold it as the signal loves to tip over when it's on its side. So let me go ahead and I will get it into uh, flashing mode. Now one thing I can do as well too is I can do the old US traffic light sequence. So one thing that these older signals um, that you would probably see back in the day, um, a lot of cars back then had manual transmissions. So what would happen is the green, um, when, it, when it was going to go to uh, the red here, was going to go to green, sometimes what would happen is um, you'd have red and then yellow would come on with the red for a brief moment. And that basically is telling you to get your transmission in gear, and then it would just go to green. This is the old um, US sequence, or nowadays the British sequence. Telling you to get your transmission in gear, and boom, you are now ready to go. We'll go ahead and watch that one more time. So let it go back up. And a lot of times you'd probably um, see these. Uh, single phase signals doing this. This is more of a common thing with four way signals um, as far as I'm concerned, but um, I'm pretty sure that signals, um, the sing single phase signals did this too. So, especially the old ones that were made around the 30s, like the Krauss-Heinz Art Deco and the Eagle uh, 
the eagle like signals of of that time so put your transmissions in gear and go all right let's go ahead now and switch it over to the flashing red sequence so this would be a sequence that you'd see um, actually nowadays on modern controllers when a controller um, is either surged or fails or there's a power failure from a storm any kind of error with the controller it'll go ahead and usually go into this red flashing all the way on every intersection or as everyone commonly knows at nighttime when there's not a lot of traffic um, flashing red would be for the side streets to tell them to stop before they go into the intersection so for this one on my instructions this is mode six so we are on two now my speed controller is down a little bit on speed so I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up to what you would usually see it as let's go ahead and take your screwdriver again you just put in this little white thing and you, it fits perfectly and you can twist it so right here would be your speed that you would usually see these on so go ahead and watch this uh, red sequence just for a little bit of a brief moment not for too long as it's just the red blinking but you can see Red is now blinking. This, of course, would be for at nighttime when the intersections are not busy. And this would basically give people a quicker chance to go through the intersection. But you'd have to stop before entering the main street. Sometimes you'd also see this on uh, beacon signals, too, just for basic inter four way intersections. But we're not going to get into that, as that is a whole other territory of traffic signals. So let's go ahead now and set it to mode 7 and we can watch the yellow sequence. Now the splashing yellow would also probably appear if there was an issue with the signal. Hold on a sec. It's the wrong button. There we go. So of course at night time on your main streets you'd see this flashing and this would basically tell you that it's okay to pass through the intersection and that um, there are no oncoming cars, but also just be careful so you wouldn't have to either be stopped or have a green light. Of course, you'd see this on beacon intersections as well. Now, as for emergency uh, signal um, fault situations, you wouldn't really see this. So, yeah. And one more uh, sequence that I will put it on to end this video is the party sequence. And I set this to a certain speed and a certain setting for when I want to play music and just have it on. So I'm going to go ahead actually and look and see which one that is. No, it's 28. All right, so let me set it to mode 28. So this is the last setting I want to show you guys. So for any collector who wants to have the signal like dance around to music. I will show you mode 28 and this is my favorite setting to put it on as it makes the signal do kind of like a dancing party sequence. So mode 28, we are on mode 7, so let's go ahead. The speed control is really sensitive on this one. There we go. So this is the last setting that I like to call the party setting, although the controller call or the instruction calls it sweeping lights up and down sequence. I think this setting is the best setting for party mode, and my Dursig also can do this as well. So this is what I call party mode for when you're jamming and listening to music. So yeah. So that is basically it. Those are all the basic sequences that you'd be seeing this signal do if it was in service. Of course, you wouldn't have the party sequence in an in intersection as it would probably cause a lot of confusion. But, for collecting purposes, yeah. So anyway, so I really enjoyed the signal. Um, I do love its appeal and design. It's really nice. Um, of course, like I said, it's really, really lightweight. I can easily pick it up compared to other signals. And despite it being um, a little bit profile, um, low profile, maybe a slight bit cheap, and build um it's still a pretty nice signal and i would definitely say that is a good um that is definitely a signal worthy of collecting in the future i hope to get a 12 inch version of this signal as it is a little bit um different than this one but mostly the same um regarding everything else but yeah 
Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, please like and subscribe if you guys would like to see more content like this. And of course, if this is the first video you've seen on this channel, please um, also subscribe so you can see my other videos and get notifications to um, see what I post in the future. Also, feel free to add a like down below as it helps me, um, it helps my channel. And it helps YouTube, of course, recommend more videos like this to people who enjoy this stuff. And if there's anything cool that you guys know about the signal, anything um, history-wise or informational-wise that I haven't mentioned about it yet, please feel free to tell me a little bit of um, a little bit of your thoughts and ideas down in the comments below. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day and have fun with your traffic signals. Bye.